All right, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're gonna to look at the expansion to Trois called the Ladies of Trois. All right, so uh, for this one, this is a modular expansion, which basically means there's five different modules and you can mix and match them into your base game to your heart's desire. Uh, play with the ones you like, don't play with the ones you don't like. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go through each of the modules, the setup and the rules for each one, and then we're gonna come back at the end and I'll sort of give you my overall thoughts on each one and how they play. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first three modules are just more cards. All right, so module one is more character cards, module two is more activity cards, and module three is more event cards. All right, so for the activities and the events, uh, no rules will change, including the setup or the rules. You're just going to shuffle these into the base game, and you'll just get a new assortment of random cards that are going to come out. All right, some of these can score a lot more, and some of these are more funky, so you're going to have to look at the rules on how they work. All right, and the other sort of uh, addition here are more character cards. All right, these deal with mostly the districts, uh, but there is one special setup slash rule for these character cards, right? If you want, uh, you can play with this variant, which I always play with actually, is uh, when you're handing out the objective cards to all the players, uh, you're gonna do like usual and hand one to every single player, but you are also gonna flip over one random objective card that's going to sit out on the board and this is a global objective that everyone's going to score so in a three player game instead of just scoring three objectives you're going to score four character objective cards and if you're four players there's going to be five total objective cards to score uh this is a great variant all right the fourth module is the head of the family which is are the purple dice all right so the way these work are they're wild all right but you can't buy these off other players so every round when you're divvying up the dice you're going to always hand one purple die to every single player you're going to roll it with their pool of dice and you're going to add it to their district and only they can use that dice all right and it's a wild so you can use it as any color so it can be uh, assigned to a group of a color to be that color you can even use it during the events to pretend it's a red to get doubled uh, you can use it however you like once you use it, it goes into the supply and next turn you'll just get it back all right uh, just as a note when it's on the board it's not considered that color but when you're using it you can pretty much consider it any color you want all right so it can even be attached to a white to do a white action or attached to a yellow to do a yellow action and so on and so on all right so pretty simple all right and the fifth module is the biggest module that will add the biggest change to your game all right so there's a lot more components and a lot more rules all right so this is the module with the guard and ramparts where we're, we're going to be moving our guard around the board and we're going to be activating these sort of tiles that sit on the outside of the board all right so a couple of things during setup you do get extra cubes they are bigger you're going to hand a few to every player uh, our, each player is going to put their guard on the zero spot of the rampart right over there and the four different spots around the game board is you're gonna take one of the two random tiles of that number and they are double sided so you can even flip them around and place it in that spot right so you can have a number one on the right two at the bottom three on the left and four on top okay and then you're ready to go all right so during the game the rule is you have a new action that you can actually do all right and this new action is using exactly one die so you can use any colored die there's no restriction on the color even your purple one if you wanted and the number on the die that you use is how many times you're going to move your guard around or additionally you can use one of the pips on it to add a cube to one of the tiles if your guard has already passed that spot all right so i'll show you with an example so let's say i was here and i use a four so let's say i give up a four that means i can use my guard twice for two pips and then my other two pips is i can add a cube to this tile and then this tile all right. Another important rule with this module is each tile can have at most one cube of your color on it. So let's say I was here and I used a two. Well, I couldn't put two tokens on this card, right? I would have to maybe move my guy once and then put one token on the on the tile. Okay. Other special rules with the movement is this is the only action in the game that you can actually boost with money. All right. So let's say I use up a four. I can use two coins to turn it into a six. The most you can ever have is a six. So if you use a six, well, you can boost it with money, but every number you use under six, well, you can boost the power uh, to make it a six by using a money, All right? So let's say I rolled a, uh, I use up a four. Well, then I can give up $2 to make it a six. So I can move five and put out a cube if I like, for example. And the last rule is obviously if you reach the end of the track, well, you don't have to move your guard anymore. If when you do that action, all you're doing is placing cubes out on the four different spots and then you can use those cubes whenever you like. All right. Uh, these cubes are quite uh, a little bit different than the activity cubes. Usually the activity cubes you can only use on your turn or 
you know, really only your turn because you're sort of using them in conjunction with your dice. But these cubes that you're putting out on the side of the board, you can use them at any time, even other players' turns, even during a phase three, which is fighting off the events and so on and so on. All right. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility during other players' turns. All right? And that's basically how the sort of module works. You're going to be moving your guard around. Uh, doing this extra action, adding tokens around and activating them as a sort of secondary ability. All right, quick thoughts time here for the Trois expansion. All right, so this is going to be quick because there's not that much in the box. And I'll start off by saying that's probably one of my biggest beefs with this expansion. It's really expensive for what you get, but I'll still go over all the modules and give you my thoughts. All right, so the first module here, the extra activity cards absolutely adore this it doubles up the cards from the base game and no two games that you have in the future will ever be the same and some of these cards are really funky and powerful uh, they let you zero in on specific strategies so keep an eye out on for those lady symbols in the top right I really love this expansion right a lot of variety um, next same exact thing the next module is the extra events again adds a bunch more events here uh, what i do like a couple of things they do add some funkier events that can happen a lot more dice can come out a lot more removal of stuff uh, really great cards i do really love this new 16 point card it's probably my favorite in the game because it can combo quite well with some of the red activity cards that just put in uh, cubes without having to hit a threshold so it combos quite well with the red strategy uh, great addition here just like the activities just adds a lot of variety next is going to be the new character cards Oop, i'm showing all of them but they only give you three more these are fine i mean they just have you focus completely on one color so you have one for each of the three major colors in the game so you're going to want to have a ton of guys in the uh, district and on the activity cards it's fine i'm actually not a fan of these three cards i am a fan though with the variant that this uh, sort of expansion introduces where uh, you flip over one of these uh, character um, bonus cards at the start of the game and make it a global one so in the base game we would all get one only and it would be a secret objective that everyone's going to score but with the expansion you can play with a variant where you're going to flip over actually an extra one put on the side of the board and everyone's going to be able to score that one too so instead of in a three player game only scoring three objectives you're actually going to be scoring four and in a four player game you're going to be scoring five objectives all right so i really like that variant i pretty much play with it every single time next head of the family this will be short and sweet uh, it's just a wild that you can add to your pool. It's fine. It's great. Uh, no rules overhead. Uh, it just makes you make bigger groups. Bigger groups are awesome. You get bigger benefits from the activity cards where you fight off events even better. Or you can go to the church and put an extra one. There's actually no downside to this <laughs> sort of module whatsoever. Play with it every time. Easy to learn. Easy to teach. And that's it. And the last one, which is the most complex and probably... In my opinion, the best part of the, about this expansion is the guards and ramparts because it fixes a couple of problems I had with the base game. Uh, one being that sometimes you can be stuck in a situation where you have one or two dice left, but you don't actually know what to do with them. So you sort of are debating whether to pass or not. In this one, you're almost never going to pass early because you're just going to use those dice to move your guy around the board. All right. And then the second problem is... Uh, you can have some games where if you're playing just the base game where you can just be flooded with money and you just have no reason to have that money and so on and so on. This is an extra action that you can use. Uh, you can spend some money to actually move your guard even further. So there's another way to use up your money instead of just collecting money for money's sake and just people are just dumping money in your lap even though you don't really need it. All right. So it fixes a couple of problems. It does add a, another action you can do in the game. It doesn't have that much rules overhead. You just have to teach them that you're gonna move your guard around, add one token to each of the things. Plus the delayed the actions that you're putting on the, the board, you can activate them at any time, including on your opponent's turn, which is sort of a funky thing that they're introducing in this expansion, all right? So overall, fantastic expansion, uh, although it is gonna be quite expensive if you're gonna get it uh, in retail all right so those are my thoughts overall fantastic expansion i hope you enjoyed it we'll see you in the next one